coming up on City Spotlight, season 10, once again featuring two communities in one episode. First, we're back in Shelbyville, and we welcome back to the program Shelbyville Mayor Jeff Johnson. Jeff updates us on the latest public works and economic development in Shelbyville, including a new venue, the Foxmore. Then we head back to Decatur as we talk for the first time about Richland Community College. Reverend Courtney Carson, Assistant Vice President of External Affairs at Richland, gives us an overview of this higher ed institution in Decatur. We're on location in our Western communities as we feature Shelbyville and Decatur next on City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com. Hello and welcome to another edition of City Spotlight. As you can see, we are on location here once again in season 10. Another episode featuring two communities. We'll start in Shelbyville. And to help us out on this latest episode on Shelbyville, we welcome back a very familiar guest to the program, Jeff Johnson, the mayor of Shelbyville. Jeff, mm -hmm. great to have you on. And I know it's been a while, so glad, great to have you on. It has been and appreciate you coming back. I always enjoy good. it. Very good. Last tape with Jeff, um, early part of 2021. So mm -hmm. a little bit too long, but uh, again, great to have mm -hmm. Jeff on. Jeff's been on almost every season since we started mm -hmm. the program in 2015 and we're not in City Hall, which we've taped in many times with Jeff. Right. Jeff told me about a new venue that is uh, about to open mm -hmm. here as we tape here uh, December 20th, near the mm -hmm. end of the year. And a new venue is about to open at the turn of the year uh, around the time that this episode airs. And uh, it is located in downtown Shelbyville, mm -hmm. just a short walk from City Hall. Mm -hmm. It's called the Foxmore. So tell mm -hmm. us about this place, the Foxmore. This is a beautiful facility. They've done a great job in uh, designing it and. It's going to be a, a facility where they're going to have different activities, plus they'll rent it out for you know, weddings or meetings, things like that. And uh, so we're excited. I know that the family's been in town for a long time. They've had other businesses. They've done a great job. And uh, it's gonna be a great part of the downtown area, a great part of the Shelbyville area. I walked in and went, wow, what a big space. We were talking with the owner just before we hit the record button. I overheard the number. It's you can see the chairs, it seats 300, so that could be a lot of large gatherings. Absolutely. So. Um, what was this building that we're at here, which is uh, in the 200 block of East Main, Shelbyville, right along the main drag, Route 16 mm -hmm. goes through here. What was this building before it's been renovated to the Foxmore? Over the years, I think this building is probably, what, 150 years old wow. or older, and I know that there's been a lot of things in here. When I was growing up, uh, Sears was in here. Sears, okay. It was, and uh, my mom actually worked in uh, this building here, so I remembered as a young boy. <laughs> but yeah, there's been a lot of things over the years, but now, you know, this is going to be perfect because, you know, you've got the, uh, the, the I guess, the culture, the, yeah. the ambiance, and uh, it's going to be great for the facility that they're going to have. And I know they're planning a lot of exciting things already. Yes, they have a they already have an active Facebook page. Uh, our, yeah. our other producer, Lazy, told me, yeah, I've mm -hmm. heard about that. I saw that on Facebook. And yeah. uh, the location is, is prime Shelbyville where mm -hmm. the cameras are set right here up against the window. And I'm looking over here to this direction. And I mm -hmm. see the courthouse. Right. So the location is you can't get more uh, centralized Shelbyville. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff, it's worth, it's worth mentioning to our audience, uh, being the mayor, you have a, another venue, another place that things can be held at, regardless Absolutely. of what does get held at. Um, what, what pluses does this give for the community to have a facility like this where it has such versatility? You know, it's amazing that whenever you talk about this facility or the others that are in town, it seems like that it just kind of feeds on itself. Momentum builds and you have more and more things that are, get drawn to the area that we actually are having a lot of weddings in town. People who are coming from out of town to get married here, 
because of the facilities to where they can have their, uh, mm -hmm. their uh, reception afterwards. And then we have a lot of things, the sunken gardens, the Chautauqua building, a lot of the churches and things in town. You where few, You have a few choices get. of where weddings and things like that can be held. Exactly. And so uh, I didn't realize until I was talking to some people this last summer, but we are, it's quite a draw, and this will add to that. Fantastic. Uh, did I see correctly? Uh, open house to the public is January 13th? Yes. Um, Very good. And looking forward, I know they're having their grand opening on the 13th, and so looking forward to that. And Our timing is perfect here. Sometimes you, you get lucky with the timing and scheduling yeah. and taping with Jeff, and this episode will air the week of <laughs> this place opening. So you're getting mm -hmm. a nice preview right here. Uh, come check it out if you don't really have an invitation or, mm -hmm. or want to check out the Fox Barn. Yeah. And then as you say, that there's a lot of events that they're getting uh, ready and planning on in I think I saw January some, some and February. Some music acts and, maybe? And, yep, some music acts. Very so good. there's going to be a lot of opportunity to come to Shelbyville and to enjoy the Fox more and to see what we have to offer. Very good. Again, we're taping here very end of the year, December 20th, right mm -hmm. before Christmas. Uh, almost uh, feels like we're taping with Jeff here, uh, kind of a year in review, what's next. Mm -hmm. So uh, other economic development in Shelbyville in 2023, what are some things that you'd like to share with us? You know, we've been pretty lucky that whenever you look at the downtown area, there's been some retail stores, there's uh, Betsy's Boutique that's opened up, there's uh, JNF Crafts, there's been a lot of things that are uh, coming to Shelbyville. And then also whenever you look at our employers, uh, graphics packaging, that earlier this year they announced uh, large investments and that they're going to be yes. continuing to look for employees and be adding employees add, over the next few years. Add some new years. technology, I believe. New technology, yeah, because that's an important part of it, to stay efficient and, you know, it's uh, just like everywhere in the United States. With the labor market, you have to look at ways of being able to stay competitive. And so, yeah, we've been fortunate uh, with that. And, um, you know, we've had some uh, spec homes being built and some more that are being worked on now and more in the planning stages so we've just got a little bit of a little bit of everything going on uh the betsy's boutique shop that mm -hmm. opened up here in the downtown area that uh, opened up at the end of september i saw i think in a press release or something online that uh, it's got other shops across the country and this is the first one in illinois so that's kind of a cool little side note there it really um, is we're we're honored that they chose Shelbyville as yeah. their first location, and I know they've been busy, and they have a lot of nice, uh, nice clothing in there. Uh, fits nicely with the other variety of businesses, kind of in that area. So it does. Uh, fits right in mm -hmm. there with that kind of that theme. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we uh, we we've we've taped and talked about uh, the downtown businesses in Shelbyville, and mm -hmm. I remember the last two times we've taped with you were um, a year after the pandemic, and then right before it, and. Mm -hmm. uh, we're now three or four years past that point. Mm -hmm. um, and you're past that worst part of the pandemic yeah. and you have businesses that are still, that were able to get through that. And mm -hmm. you have new ones like Betsy's Boutique. Uh, yeah. How would you say overall the, the downtown businesses overall as a whole, uh, you were able to survive the pandemic and mm -hmm. still continue to flourish? Yeah, we have been, we've been lucky and we have a lot of great people in town. Uh, we have a great community. And whenever you look and see that during the pandemic, Actually, the uh, traffic to the lake picked up because I think a lot of people chose to come to the lake outside. and do the outside activities. And so, yeah, we've been very fortunate. And we end up, we've got a good group of some, you know, outside folks that have come to town and invested. We have a lot of local people like here at the Foxmore that they've invested in the community. There's just a lot of excitement and momentum building. There's a lot of our businesses that uh, they've been long established businesses, right. but they're being bought out by the new generation. And they right. come in with new ideas and, and it's exciting. It's, it's wonderful to see. Most importantly, they continue what's here. Don't demolish, tear away. And one exactly. of those businesses that we talked about the last time we taped with Jeff there, uh, beginning of 2021 there, uh, prior to us taping in 2021, uh, a local food establishment mm -hmm. had an unfortunate fire, the Long yeah. Branch Bar. Yeah. And now, three almost three years later, uh, rebuilt in a new location. Right. And you told me before taping, uh, new owners. Yep, they have, they have new owners. It was people who had worked with them for many years. So, you know, they have the experience, they have the knowledge, they have the uh, energy, and uh, they're doing a great job there. The food is wonderful, and the atmosphere is wonderful. So, 
it's worked out well. We were glad that they were able to stay here in town. Very good. All right, from economic development, let's get a highlight on public works. Okay. I know I know we've talked about uh, in, in almost every episode that you and I have taped on this program, uh, streetscape, what public mm -hmm. works things from 2023, this this year as we're taping at the end of 2023, what are what is a highlight or two of public works things that were, that were worked on or achieved? I know that uh, some of the things that were achieved was out at the park, we put in new lights and the ball diamonds, uh, you Very know, nice. to help it help to uh, extend the daylight, you know, and, and, uh, and you're referring, you're referring to in. Forest Park, right? Right, Forest okay. Park. Okay. We have a new dog park out at Forest Park. That Wonderful. Just opened up this year. Those are popping up in other communities, so it's a trend. They are. You know, there was a lot of people who loved it whenever the suggestion came up, and so we got it started, and we'll mm -hmm. be adding a few more things next year. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of infrastructure things, water meters we've redone, a lot of things going on in the background to more streetscape to do more of the downtown area for those background things it. are very important it is and you know a lot of the stuff whenever you start talking about the sewer and the water lines we want to get that done so whenever we do the actual sidewalks and streets they don't have to be torn up again in a few years right. so we're trying to get that all in place and we're hoping that in this next sea or this next year coming up to get uh, more streetscape out to bid here and uh, we have a bike path uh, that uh, we're going to be extending and so a lot of exciting things happening. We just have to keep that pipeline full, keep the projects on the table. That streetscape we've talked about so many times yeah. from the inception of the idea to completion mm -hmm. is going to be probably a decade once it's all said and done so things do take time. They do. All right, very good. Uh, again, we're, we're sharing this episode with you at the beginning of 2024 and an event that annually takes place and that we've talked about previously. Mm -hmm. And I think it'd be worth mentioning to our audience again, Jeff, uh, in January at the General Dacey Trail, mm -hmm. a beautiful, beautiful uh, annual thing that is held in Shelbyville is mm -hmm. the Candlelight Walk. It is, it's nice. They uh, uh, light the pathway and mm -hmm. there's different luminaries and different lights that hang from the trees. They have a bonfire and hot chocolate and the community gets out there and I know that uh, I spend part of the time as a greeter and uh, just talking to people you know that come from all over central Illinois to white, walk on the bike path during that candlelight walk it is it's nice and the Dacey Trail out by the lake is beautiful in the winter time at night like that it's beautiful in the fall it's always nice it's always heavily used and so we're very fortunate to have it as you can hear the noise in the background, Shelbyville is evolving. Mm -hmm. We're at the Foxmoor, mm -hmm. a new venue in downtown that will be opening up uh, in January of 2024. Mm -hmm. Jeff, obviously you're a native of Shelbyville. Right. Uh, remind our audience at home how long you've been mayor. Uh, I've been mayor about 10 years now. All right, very good. So, so it was around the time that we started this program. That's right. So uh, mm -hmm. I, as I, as I, when I interviewed the mayor of Urbana recently, it's like I'm taping here near the end of the year. So I want to give you the opportunity to share with the audience what you're thankful for this community. Yeah. I'm just thankful, you know, whenever you look, a community is made up of the people. And whenever you look at the community, uh, that it's like family. And I'm just thankful for all of the good people. You know, we have a lot of people who've been here for generations and generations. We have a lot of people who've just liked the area and moved in and uh, they want to be part of the community. And, you know, it's everything starts with that nucleus of just a good group of people. And we are very, very, very fortunate in Shelbyville. We're blessed with uh, the people we have. And we are thankful for the time of the mayor of Shelbyville, Jeff Johnson. Always a pleasure to tape with you, Jeff, and come you to Shelbyville. Have had Jeff on again almost every season for all of the 10 seasons of City Spotlight. Mm -hmm. So Jeff, thank you so much for updating us on Shelbyville. You bet, enjoyed it, and you're welcome anytime. Thank you so much. Coming up next here on City Spotlight, we'll change locations and communities as we head north to Decatur and talk for the first time about Richland Community College. But first, let's take a look at some of the upcoming activities in the communities of Shelbyville and Decatur. back here on City Spotlight. This new combo episode featuring two communities. We've left Shelbyville and now we've come back over to Decatur. Great to be back in Decatur. And we're talking higher education in Decatur and a first time talking 
Richland Community College. And to help us out in this first segment on Richland Community College, we welcome to the program Reverend Courtney Carson. He's the Assistant Vice President of External Affairs here at Richland Community College. Reverend Carson, great to have you on the program. Um, it's magnificent to be on the program, man. Thank you so much. Thanks we're for having me. We're taping here with Reverend Carson on December 11th, so right before the uh, end of 2023. And great to be talking Richland Community College for the first time here on City Spotlight. Before we get an overview of Richland Community College, let's learn a little bit about Reverend Carson. You're a first time guest. Tell our audience a little bit about yourself, please. Well, I, I'm, some would say I'm an interesting individual, right? <laughs> I have an uh, intimate relationship with the city of Decatur. I'm an advocate for education and a uh, proponent of change. I believe in change. Um, I have a three-tier kind of approach when I look at infrastructures that's civil, physical, and spiritual, mm -hmm. right? So government, uh, city, uh, city council, school board, um, uh, the way the roads look, the laws that govern us, uh, we need some spiritual direction so that we can be taken out of some of those hell-like conditions that we're in. Uh, so that's access to the classroom, justice in the courtroom, and community support. And uh, I've always been concerned with the ways of the world and which direction we're going in. So I believe it's my job to be actively involved in bettering the lives of others, right? And so making sure that each and every individual that I come in contact with, I leave that person with a new way of thinking, a renewed way of thinking, a replenished uh, kind of way uh, of thinking and with a new mindset that's on the horizon to where they can be better, they can grow and become a better individual and also uh, receive the kind of education that will allow them to uh, acquire the kind of employment to where they're able to feed their family. So I'm kind of holistic in my approach to just living life. Very good. Uh, tell us a little bit about your position you have here at Richland, what it mm -hmm. entails, and how long have you been at the college? So I've been at the college for uh, since 2017. Okay. I started uh, here as a uh, I, creator of this Enrich program mm -hmm. that's been magnificent, where we believe that essential skills and technical skills equals changed lives. So since 2017, we've been able to service over 2,700 individuals, where 91% uh, of those individuals are at work today. 81% mm -hmm. of those individuals are African American. Mm -hmm. 55 are ex-offenders. Um, so we're doing some phenomenal work in the areas of non-credit, right? Mm -hmm. So then President Valdez said, hey, you are phenomenal with our elected officials. So we're going to transition you uh, from what you're doing in the classroom to interacting and enriching the lives of uh, so many individuals that come from uh, our lawmakers. Mm -hmm. So engaging our lawmakers. And I said, okay, I think I can do that because I've already been in, involved in that process. So now I uh, ensure and engage uh, lawmakers, not just in the city of Decatur, uh, but in Washington, D.C., have phenomenal relationships with individuals so that we can make sure uh, that we're getting the proper grants and proper mm -hmm. uh, subsidies to ensure a healthy student for the most part, because it's really all about our students. That's what it's about. A community college isn't a community college unless it has a significant representation of the community and a population of young people willing to are hungry for education. I don't care what your favorite rapper says, education is still essential. Yes, it is. Very good. Again, we're talking first time here on City Spotlight, Richland Community College, and uh, we're glad to have Reverend Carson on. We look forward to having President uh, Dr. Valdez on down the road. Uh, mm -hmm. For our audience at home, just tell us a little bit about working with Dr. Valdez. Tell us a little bit about him. Oh man, working with President Valdez, Dr. Valdez, is phenomenal. He's a heavenly instrument in a way that he leads. He is a secure leader, right? Mm -hmm. And he gives us, watch this, because I've never had a leader that is okay with you or gives you room to make a mistake. Because if you can't make a mistake, then how do you ever get anything right? Or you'll, you'll be afraid, afraid to operate. Mm -hmm. So he believes in his team. Um, he allows us to be creative and uh, courageously innovative in our approach mm -hmm. to education. Um, he, he's just a well-rounded individual. And not only is he a, f a superb boss, which mm -hmm. he doesn't like me saying that. <laughs> not only is he a superb boss, but he's a magnificent friend as it relates to your own growth and development. And whenever there's a, you, you're dealing with something, some kind of challenging controversy, he's there to be an ear and to be a, a shoulder to lean on. And he counseled so many of us out of our own 
struggles, and it's just magnificent to have him as the president of Richland Community College. Since he'd been here, since he's been here at Richland Community College, he turned the college around, the culture around. Uh, at one particular point in time, when we were in a deficit, now we're not because he was—he's extremely skilled at going to get the funds to make sure right. that this is a well-ran institution. He's just magnificent. He's the only president that I've ever been under that's so visible and makes himself available to not just his cabinet, not just his uh, staff, but the students. You'll find President Valdez playing pool with students in the, in the foyer. Awesome. You'll find him interacting and shaking hands with students and they'll never know who he is. And then they later find out, oh wait, that was the president. So he's a magnificent person to learn from as well. Well, we look forward to talking with President yeah. Valdez down the road, but let's learn about Richland Community College with you, mm -hmm. uh, Reverend Carson, and uh, we are in Decatur. Richland Community College located on the east side of Decatur mm -hmm. and uh, looking at uh, the facts and some of the information that I, I was able to read about Richland, obviously serving the immediate area, uh, or the counties around Macon County. Mm -hmm. Tell us about Richland Community College, its location and its role mm -hmm. here in central Illinois. Well, Richland Community College is a uh, institution that has a significant, diverse kind of approach to the community within it, uh, wh where, we, where we are yes. in the city of Decatur. Mm -hmm. So, and not just the city of Decatur, but those communities that surrounds the city of Decatur as right. well. We do a really, really good job at ensuring that we respond to our partners. Whatever it is that they need, we'll respond to it. Say for instance, DPS 61, we have a phenomenal program called well, the prep program, right? There's nothing like that in the country. And I travel a whole heck of a lot trying to figure out, are we doing innovative things or are we just copying someone else? But we have been able to position ourselves to really do some innovative things here in the city of Decatur. When you got a, we target eighth graders and by the time they are in ninth grade, they have a clear ideal on what they want to do. So when they graduate, they not only graduate with a high school diploma out of our prep program, but also an associate's degree. No one else is doing that. Yes, we have dual credit, uh, dual credit classes and opportunities around the country, but no one else is gr graduating uh, hundreds of students with a high school diploma and an associate's, associate's degree. And not only that, we have a phenomenal project as it relates to Enrich, Future Jobs of America titled uh, the Enrich program mm -hmm. as one of the nation's best practices. I talked about Enrich earlier. So mm -hmm. we're doing some phenomenal things. And right. then not only that, you got to stop me when I'm, you know, because I'm a preacher, so I'm going to continue to talk. You are on a pretty good <laughs> roll right here. Hey, Amen. <laughs> so not only that, we have our Climatic Research Center. We are the only institution in the country that's embedded in a manufacturing company around EV. And so we're leading the conversation wow. in that uh, in that particular sector. We partner with TCCI. They make um, American-made uh, electric carburetors. Wow. And so we, coupled with our workforce uh, resilience training, we'll f create a situation where individuals can go right into uh, TCCI in our classrooms there, leave the classroom, go on the floor and learn about what we just talked to them about and then get a certificate, become an engineer, become an, a laborer and make a whole lot of money so that they can take care of their families. As you know, the workforce world is changing. Yes. Everything is in AI and DV, right? So if the workforce jobs are gonna change by 50%, what does that look like for the least of these, for the black and brown person? That might be 80%. So we must be proactive in our approach to educate them and train them for this new wave of workforce. Even when you look into, uh, go to Aldi's today, you see all the machines in one tell us, yes. right? So we gotta train folks to uh, work the machines because then there's not gonna be, you know, we may not have a cashier. The education and the people that are teaching and learning it must adapt to the Most change, certainly. changing times. Most certainly. Very good. Uh, I love sharing a little bit of history in our last few minutes with you, Reverend Carson. I love mm -hmm. sharing the history of first time uh, places, institutions, uh, Richland Community College uh, got its name in 1975. Mm -hmm. And this campus that we are sitting here taping at and we'll ha and have some video of as we're talking uh, in its current existence, 1988. Uh, Beautiful campus, my first time coming mm -hmm. here, taping here, and uh, talk about your campus and kind of how it's evolved through the years. Man, it's a, it evolved, you know, we started in the bank, in a vault, That's right? right. 
<laughs> in That's a right. vote in the bank. And now we we host the largest farm progress show in the country. Yes, you do. Right? We have the best agriculture. I would say one of the best agriculture programs right here across the street. We just built that. It'll host 100 young people who has a desire in agriculture. Have a new ag building that yes. was just dedicated yeah. a month before we're taping <laughs> Yes, here. by the Andrews family. Um, again, we're, we're expanding our approaches as it relates to EV. We're in that sector and bio uh, fermented fermentation processing in that particular sector. Our workforce training is, is just robust to where now we're sitting down with ADM and they want us to wow. train their entire staff, right? And again, with Premium, and again with TCCI, we're doing some phenomenal things on this campus, man. Just think about it. I don't know how many people can fit in a bank vault, but now we went from that, from, from that a long time ago to all this magnificent space. Hum, humble beginnings. Right, these humble beginnings to all this magnificent space where we're renovating for more students and we still, so we got phenomenal classroom lecture space, but we still need more space for our larger programs right. where we're doing the manufacturing trainings. And so we're busting out the seams. Education, at one particular point in time, folks didn't look at it like they should have, but now they're really paying close attention to it. But not just the education, mm -hmm. but the workforce trainings. Because manufacturing isn't dirty, it's clean. Manufacturing isn't low paid jobs, it's phenomenal wages. And if everybody take this into deep consideration, mm -hmm. where they want to be in the next five years, they would begin at Richland Community College. Last question for you, Reverend yes, Carson, sir. and I appreciate your energy, it's, uh, it's infectious. and. Uh, uh, we're just scratching the surface talking Richland Community College, so we'll definitely come back and talk more in detail about different areas. Mm -hmm. uh, we are sharing this episode with our audience at home at the very beginning of 2024. Uh, mm -hmm. Give us, in the final minute or two that we have with you, give us a little something that is uh, in, in the future, in this next year for Richland, that it's on the docket that we should know about in 2024. 2024, our IFAB training. Our robust health care, enriched health care training is just magnificent. We're responding to the needs of the country and the right. world, right? Mm -hmm. And we're saving life, producing real life heroes. The first person to see someone die and the first person to see life, nurses. We need those individuals. Wow. Take a deep look at what we're going to do in 24 with our EV project. That's going to be remarkable. Mm -hmm. Richland Community College is at the forefront, forefront of every innovative conversation right around the country, right here in the small city of Decatur, but we have a phenomenal, great, big mammoth impact. We're doing some great things here. Fantastic. Again, barely scratching the surface of things going on here at Richland Community College. We look forward to coming back and learning more in detail about it. And we appreciate the time of Reverend Courtney Carson, Assistant VP of External Affairs here at Richland Community College. Reverend Carson, yes, thank you for giving us a, an overview of Richland Community College. Thank you so much for coming here, man. I truly appreciate you. Thank you so much. Yes, and that'll do it for our latest City Spotlight episode featuring two communities, the communities of Shelbyville and Decatur. Thanks for watching. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.